Okay. My dog's in the room, so if you hear snorting or something like that, it's her doing. So it is what it is. All right. So I'm talking about this app. This is Ableton, for those that don't know, Live 11 Suite. Um, suite ver edition, which they, which I really dig about Ableton is that you can do, hold on a second, I need to go in here and switch my audio, which I have to do, put it to external, okay, cool. Um, you can get a 90 day free trial on this full suite version. So if you're interested, check it out and I always say buy Ableton at discount when you can get it on a discount. Like don't buy it at full price because it is pretty expensive at full price. And if you unsure if you want to get in on it, there's always that free light version, which only allows you to have eight tracks. And then the, the intro is like 16. And for most people, unless they're creating some really deep orchestral or something like really, really like vocals, maybe too, they don't need a full, the full version or but in this case, for this particular app, you do need the full version. So I like the full version because there's a lot of guys that create these cool, the dogs right here scratching, <laughs> that create these um, cool plugins for Max for Live. And this is one of them that I found that I really like. And I've been looking at it for a while and debating whether I wanted to get it. Ended up deciding to go through with it. And I'm glad I did. There's a lot to like about it. It is a pretty deep app as far as the capabilities that you have. Um, at the same time, it can be simple. And I'm going to do my best to break it down as simple as I can for those that may be interested. I know a lot of people won't click on this video because Court of Mist is not like um, a necessity app for most people because there's Scalar, there's other apps that you can get to that are probably easier access. Now, this is a one day of app. I think his name is, or he goes by um, Loptimus. And you can see right there his name, Loptimus. Quart and Quartimus is what it's called. And he um, sells it. He has a new website. He used to go through Gumroad, but I think now he just sells it on his own website for $49. So I think it's really worth it. And I'll show you why in just a second. Uh, there's so many options. All right, so let's talk about, let's just start from the top and work our way down. So in the top, here's the scale of the notes that are in music, right? So you have from C, C sharp, D, etc., all the way to B. This little guy here is a, is a randomized one. So when you turn it on, right now we're, we're on this thing here. I'm going to turn, oh, you know what? Let me move to a different chord section so I don't mess up what I did. I want to show you from here. If you leave it off and you just play, it's going to play a C. Let me go to, we'll go here. It's just going to play the C because that's what it's on. And you can set it. You could be like, all right, I want a G. Okay. But if you put it on random, each time you hit it, it's going to trigger a different chord. So we'll leave it on offer right now until I'll show you the next part. So here's the types of chords, right? That you can pull from. So there's major, minor, this is your dominant, these are your diminished chords. And these are all the basic chords that you need really with all these various voicings. So you can see all the minors are here, all the majors, dominants, as I said, diminished. And what you can do is each one of these little dice represents a certain thing that you can do. So for instance, this first one has an M in the middle, a big, a capital M. So if you do this, it's only gonna randomize in the major. If you do the little one or the small M, it's gonna only randomize in the minor. So you have a little more control. Sevenths will be your dominance. Now we're just using C sharp. Let's just use C so it doesn't drive you crazy with the sharp, okay? If you do this one, it's gonna randomize the diminish. And then this one, I don't know yet what it's doing, to be honest with you. It looks like it's staying in the diminished diminish sevens down here. Um, so I'm not sure on that one. That one's a little confusing me. This one though is the one I probably use the most and it's just a randomize. It'll randomize between all of them. 
So what's cool about this is you can sit here and play to your heart's content till you find the C that you want, right? But if you set both of them, so randomize here and randomize in this section, just keep pressing. It's going to randomize your, your note. It's gonna randomize the chord. But let's say you know the note you want for sure is you wanna start with a G. So then turn that randomize off and now just randomize the bottom section. Okay. And then let's say, well, that's nice, but I want it to be more open. You can switch and play open. So open is just inverting chords or notes and making it sound more open. Or you can use the comping. Or you can do like a top third where it takes a third and just moves it always to the top, right? That way. I mean here rather, I'm sorry. Okay, and then there's close, which is your regular. So then you have inversion up and down. So you can sit there and manually, you see me manually moving the notes. So in order for this to work, you have to hit the stop button, right? And then So let's say that's the one you want, okay? So now you don't have to do inversions because you just, these are manual. You're manually inverting it. Transpose, same principle. You can transpose it. Bring it up one. One, one you know, transpose one note up or down or 12, 12 uh, note. Right here, semitones. So if you do that, it's gonna move way up the, and bring it back. So it's all these things that you can use to help you come up with a chord. Now, Scalar is different. It has way more features. So I will say it's probably a deeper app, a better app in that essence. But what I like about this one is, this is native to Ableton. So, with Scalar, where I love Scalar using it, but uh, having something native to to um, Ableton is kind of nice. And hopefully, this is a Max for Live plugin, so hopefully um, the Push 3, being that it does play Max for Live, and I heard on one video that it does play, or it's playing third party Max for Live plugins, which is kind of nice. So I'm hoping that this will be one that will work with it. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm just thinking that maybe that could be the case. Okay, back to where we were. So stack, you can do randomize on stack. So what stack is doing is stacking notes. Like it's adding a layer of notes. So I'm gonna do one. You do double, it's gonna double the double stack. It's, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Three. So you can stack up a bunch of notes or you can just do um, a randomize on the stack and it'll be, it'll pick it literally randomly. Now what's cool about this is all these features so far that we've talked about is each of these squares over here represents a key. So you see me pressing this one key right here, it's just playing that one. If I go this one, it's another key. So that's kind of cool because you can tailor each square and write a chord progression. So let's say like this first one is G and we want a G minor set uh, with a, a nine and a nine. Then you can so have the second one go C minor seven with 11, ninth and 11. So. so you can make each one of these a chord and beneath these chords is this red uh, presets, basically. You're making preset chords. So you'll see in this one I made.
So I made those four chords and I like them because I feel like they're very interchangeable the way I made them. Um, they're basically in the key of C and I'm just using those as interchangeable chords. So mind you, I'm, I'm using this as a control track as the chord of miss and then I have the keys here. So whatever instrument you plug in, it's just basically like scalar. You're just playing in that instrument, right? Um, okay, back to where we're. So those are the colors. You can put the colors in to represent each chord. And you can see you can hold pretty much the whole keyboard, 88 keys or whatever you have. Um, you can sit there and make them all. So you might want in a track, you might say, okay, I want this section to be the verse. I want another section where it's going to be the chorus, vice versa, so on and so forth, you know, or whatever. You can make it a bridge or pre-chorus, whatever. Or you could have maybe this chord. Let me see. I think you can option, if I'm not mistaken, copy. Am I hitting the right button? Command, copy. Yeah. So command, copy, allow you to copy the same chord. And let's say on this one, you want to do a stack maybe like a one, okay? So now you can play. See what I'm saying? So I added in the stack right there, which is like creating, it's taking the same chord and embellishing it a little bit, right? To give it a little more feel. It's just really cool. So you can have those embellishment chords that run the same as these and just embellish them with a stack. So like for instance, just I'll just show you another one. I'm gonna copy this one here. And then I'm gonna put a three on this one. So that sounds like. That's really cool. So it's not that you can't do something similar in able and um scalar, but you it's to me it's a lot more work. Like this one to me is so much easier to to do things like this that and it's helping me build the chord as I go. So down here below you can see you can sustain a chord, you can one shot the chord, art, and then there's arts that you can use on them. So like a one shot would sound like it just goes across in one shot. If you sustain it, it'll hold the last note or hold the chords till you release it. Okay, so that's your options. These are directions, so you can have the chord do some weird wonky stuff where it plays from different notes in the chord. And every time you hit it, it's playing different. You'll watch the way it moves on here. So it's, it's moving all this. So these are all different types of things. I mean, it's just crazy, all this stuff, but I'm just gonna leave it for now here. <laughs> it's cool. So there you go. Um, velocity, you can change the velocity on it. Duration sync is um, the timing. So that's your standard one, one to one. If you did something like this one, it's going to go a little faster. So timing and stuff on the, on the sync. I just leave one to one on for right now. Cause that's fine with me. I haven't figured out what amount means. Oh, now I know it's only playing two notes of the chord. So if you, I'm going to just do select. If you pick these numbers, it's going to play that many notes within that chord. So if you pick more than the notes that are in the chord, it's going to just play, another, it's going to go back and play one of the other notes. Um. Okay. Presets. I already talked about that. Pitch. So you can pitch the notes if you want, and then you can do like these groups internal groups, and I haven't really messed with any of this. Some of this stuff I may use down the road, but I'm not really worried about it so much right now. Um, I just, I like the ability, the way it creates and allows me to 
put the cords together. I like the fact that it's a built-in scalar plug-in, which I mean scalar plug Ableton plug-in. So I think this is really cool. All right, so I just wanted to show you this is one of my favorite plugins. I might start doing this like showing some of the Ableton plugins because I do use Ableton quite a bit, although I'm using other things too, like Koala and stuff like that. I'll use Ableton a lot of times to create the music, the chords, the, um, or I might use um, like a uh, scaler. Oh, this, I will tell you this, which I'm probably do a, a video on, but using iPad with the, with the desktop is really cool. And I've been messing around with it a little bit. Um, so I'll show you that on the next one. I want to leave this video at Cordimus. Uh, the next one I'll do will have more of the how do I use the IDAM, I-D-A-M, which is pretty much the way I can plug in like my phone or plug in the um, iPad and record directly into my DAW of choice. In this case, I use Ableton. So I like it in Ableton. You can do it in Logic, but I like it in Ableton just um, recording in because I can do my drums using Koala and then drum it in, kind of like if I had using the SP or whatever. Um, so yeah, just something else to, to, to deal with. So then recording is pretty simple. I'll do a quick one just um, for the sake of doing it. This is obviously open. You need to know where your chords are. So I might use these embellished chords to make an intro, right? So let's do that. Here, I'm gonna set this timing for, and I think if I'm not mistaken, it follows the host time. Cause that would be pretty bad if it didn't, right? All right, so let's do this. Here we go. You know what? It might be good to turn on the metronome so I'll know what I'm playing to. Let's try it again. Okay, so the way I, I, I guess I do this on everything. I always play a, a chord over extra just because um, I'm so used to doing that with like a lot of the like SP and stuff and Koala. All right, so then on here, I just hit Command L. That loops out the phrase that I touch. And then... that note and delete that. So that's really cool. And then like if I was going to say, okay, this is going to be one part of it, and I might come over here, remove the loop, and then play that other thing that I was telling you about. Something like that. I don't know. Look how many notes is in that thing because it's, it's embellishing it, stacking it. It's crazy. All right. So then there you go. That's just the idea just to put something for an intro. Maybe move that there. That there. All right. Let's do this. And we'll turn the loop on. So there you go, kind of a quick way to get into a song and do something. Um, hit tab, yeah. And I just wanted to show you that. So Cordimus is the name of the app, and it is a MIDI. Um, why does it not let me see it? Oops. I don't know what I did 
right there. Hmm. Now that's weird. So usually in Ableton, you have a thing here to let you let you open the window. For some reason, I'm not seeing the window when I open it. So it's kind of weird. I'll have to figure that one out. I just got it. I just learned it. So it's not hadn't been that long. All right. So that's it for this video. Until the next one, I'll show you some stuff with the uh, using the iDAM feature if you want to use your iPad into your computer. All right. I'm out.